it's an honor to be here and I'm particularly excited about the video on e-learning and its potentials for development that you're making. Very much look forward to seeing the finished product. As far as um, what, uh, who I represent, I work for the World Bank in Washington, D.C. And my role is um, head of, uh, I, I am the organization's focal point uh, at the intersection of education technology and development learning. And so, as you know, uh, learning is key to solving development challenges and especially to meeting the World Bank's twin goals of eradicating poverty and sharing prosperity. Whether it's food security or Ebola outbreaks, development progress is often uh, challenged by multi-interdisciplinary factors, and mitigating this requires a change that needs to be harnessed by continuous technology. So with this goal in mind, about four years ago, we launched the Open Learning Campus, um, which is an ecosystem for learning where World Bank staff and our clients in over 200 countries and who work on uh, complex challenges such as health systems for the poor, um, mitigating climate change, um, uh, improving transportation in their cities, uh, come together and learn and together co-create solutions to solve these development challenges. Mm -hmm. So how, um, in practical terms, uh, does it work? How does uh, your open learning um, process go? So, um, you know, the, the Open Learning Campus really represents um, the World Bank Group's commitment to harnessing technology, the technology revolution in learning uh, to advance these efforts. What we did is we looked at innovations in pedagogy, we looked at um, best practices in online platforms such as Coursera that came out of Stanford, uh, edX from the Harvard MIT group, Salman Khan's uh, Khan Academy, uh, and we took the best practices uh, from these to create the Open Learning Campus. And this really integrates innovations, as I said, in technology, in instructional design, in open courseware, in collaborative learning, games, uh, gamification, and mobile formatting. So if you look at it, uh, nobody today really learns by coming to a one-week or a two-week course, which is what traditionally the World Bank Institute, which was the learning and the think tank of the bank, used to do. So what we, the way we've uh, envisioned the Open Learning Campus is through three schools. People learn through bite-sized learning, 10 to 15 minutes of short focused nuggets that focus on storytelling and multimedia capabilities. So you can imagine um, a, a practitioner. Uh, and uh, I will say that the Open Learning Campus is targeted towards uh, development practitioners, policy makers, um, academia, NGO, private sector, youth, and above all, citizens who can make the change. So with this broad group, they are very busy, um, you know, busy practitioners who don't have time to take away a week here or a few days there. Therefore, we've broken it into these schools. As I said, the bite-sized learning are, are focused on the busy practitioner to learn in short nuggets. TED-like talks, podcasts, short games, simulation, 10 to 15 minutes of learning, and uh, that's how they accumulate and stay abreast. Then you have um, the academies, which are the longer um, uh, structured learning. This could be the massive open online course we talked about. It could be facilitated learning. Uh, these are learning that is cohort-based, four weeks, people together in health, come to talk about um, uh, new techniques uh, and so on, or learn from other countries. But what is um, a little bit unique about this is that uh, you can gather together about 200 people, global um, participation, and these are mentored, coached, and facilitated by country-level, global, and regional facilitators. So it's entirely digital but it's not a lonely experience. There are facilitators um, responding to your questions. 
And then finally, we have another school, which we call Connect. And this is a place where practitioners can connect with each other. So you can have a mayor from Barcelona talk to a mayor from Mumbai and exchange their challenges and how uh, each of them solved problems. And so this is a place, it's, I call it a place where people can have problem-solving conversation and crowdsource solutions. So together, the open three schools and more coming as the way we learn changes and as we know more about how people learn, I think continuous learning, interactive learning, participatory learning is, is really uh, the way to go because the development practitioners for whom we design this learning are really not uh, students. They have a wealth of experience that they want to share. And so this is what this open learning campus is about, and a, a place, a digital platform, uh, where you can share, learn, contribute, and solve some of the world's complex problems. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about uh, how you address, uh, given that you cater uh, to a global audience, uh, tell me how do you address uh, the um, cultural issue. So um, that's an interesting question. Um, so uh, what we do is, in this case, because it's e-learning, it's global, and so and the World Bank. Uh, really has a large repository of global development knowledge in many of the sectors I mentioned, such as water, energy, sanitation, urban, and so on. What we then do is we work with local and country level centers of excellence to, um, to bring in the, uh, not just cultural, but the local context. And they then customize the courses in certain cases uh, to the local context, bringing in the cultural elements, but also in many cases the language and so on. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but in in a broad way, these are global courses. But then we customize it to local context, local case studies, uh, bringing in local facilitators and so on. All right. Um, you told the story, um, a very interesting story in your presentation yesterday about um, a participant who, um, who translated what he had learned in a song or something like that. So, so yeah, uh, well, I use that story to illustrate how when you have a, a delivery mode like a MOOC, you know, a MOOC attracts, especially on things like climate change and so on, it attracts 30,000, 40,000 people around the world. And they are together as a cohort for a month, learning about the adaptation and mitigating factors of climate change and how they can help in their community uh, be a small part of the change. So as part of this MOOC, what we asked, one of the assignments was to ask participants to create what we call a digital artifact. And the digital artifact should not be text, it should be multimedia and so on to show what they learned, what were the key takeaways from this, uh, from this MOOC. And so there was a participant from Jamaica who was so excited about what he learned about the mitigating, um, uh, what he learned to mitigate climate change. So he wrote a song, he strummed it on the guitar, a very moving song, and um, he said, this is how I'm gonna take what I learned in this course and uh, help my community, the community I live in, to understand so I can be a small part of this change. Mm -hmm. But this is just one story. There are many, many others that we um, get from um, opportunities. And I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Open Learning Campus is not um, a very traditional platform. Uh, you know, often it's not a Netflix of videos or something. It's very much interactive and participatory. And we learn as much from the participants as they learn from these global knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, what are some of the challenges that uh, you've been facing uh, since the Open Campus started? So um, it's been a very encouraging reception. Um, we have millions of people coming to the portal to consume the bite size um, and, and also participate in the deeper learning. Um, 
we do hear of bandwidth challenges and so uh, I think uh, that is going to be a uh, I did mention to you in most of our MOOCs particularly, we have about 20% of people from Africa joining, which is very, very encouraging. You couldn't have, um, that couldn't have been possible even uh, five years ago. So uh, we need to still solve uh, a bit more the bandwidth challenge and with uh, uh, what I was reading is that uh, with the broadband and, and mobile, uh, I think that will uh, be resolved or at least improved in the next few years. Um, we also have the challenge of dropouts that we need to address, uh, but then uh, I think there's new research to point out that even the people who do drop out, they gain, um, it's like a, a buffet, you enter the buffet, you eat what you need to eat or want to eat, and some people may check out, and that's fine too because they have been learning. Um, and the, the people who do stay on till the end and meet all of the criteria, they, they earn the certificate. Um, so um, uh, that's, those are challenges. Of course, you know, um, digital learning, uh, unlike face-to-face, -face, uh, takes up a little bit more time and effort to produce well. You need a multidisciplinary team, you need people to think through and codify what is in their head into interactive modules. So these, these take some time and effort. And so to bring people along uh, from their traditional mode of, I prefer to stand up and teach uh, and talk about whatever I know, uh, to see, sit these people down and really think about what are the objectives I'm trying to cover, how can I make this engaging and interesting, how can I make it less um, sage on the stage, and more guide on the side. Uh, these are the, but I think we're progressing a lot and people are uh, unlearning some of their traditional practices and uh, relearning new things. So uh, it's an exciting time to be in the field of education technology. I was mentioning to someone, it's like the golden age. Um, as uh, practitioners in educational technology and learning, um, there's so much going on, there's so much change uh, with the artificial intelligence coming on board to help us personalize the learning path, uh, to live uh, and bring about uh, VR, AR, and live in a blended and uh, learn in a blended environment will bring a lot of realism and immersiveness in learning. And uh, even um, sometimes using geospatial data and so on, can help you really bring the realism in learning. So give, uh, let's say we're tackling slum upgrading and how great would it be to actually have the geospatial data of the place a participant wants to upgrade and use that data uh, along with tools to create policy and uh, address um, the slum upgrading issue. So there are lots going on that technology is bringing. Um, and um, I look forward to integrating more and more uh, new things, new but relevant things. So it's not about technology for the sake of technology, but where technology makes sense to either improve access, scale, improve the effectiveness of learning, uh, improve the effectiveness of understanding learning data to make better decisions on learning design, um, on a return on investment and so on. Mm -hmm. One last question, Sheila. Um, one recurrent theme uh, during uh, this uh, e-learning conference uh, um, in Kigali uh, has been uh, the way of uh, making content engaging and uh, based on localized. Uh, how do you um, uh, think you uh, at Open Campus uh, are going to uh, uh, to follow through that kind of, uh, uh, of of advice. So these are definitely very interesting ideas that came up, and and we are grappling um, for a long time on how do you make this interesting, engaging, and immersive. So um, I think one of the things is you know we're already on the start of this journey um, where we've moved away from a long lecture-based kind of learning to uh, using more of the uh, interactive practices. I think storytelling is going to play a huge role uh, because storytelling is very good for uh, when you want to evoke an emotional reaction, when you want to help people understand a change. 
But then storytelling is not very good when you teach, want to teach somebody numbers and um, um, exact how-to instructions. So my thought on this is, yes, engagement in learning is criti critical. But at the same time, we have to look at who are our learners and what are we trying to achieve and then select the right pedagogy, the light, right delivery mode to achieve what we want to achieve.